What's the worst concert you have ever been to? Snoop Dogg 2010 took him 4 hours to come out because he was watching the Lakers Celtics finals. Then when it ended we walked outside and people were getting tear gassed. He did the same shit in my town too. Saw his plane flying in. Black Learjet going super slow. 2 hours after he was supposed to be performing. It was an outdoor show. So bar or is 11 cute off. With exceptions of course. Apparently he didn't hit the stage until 1am. Did 3 half assed songs. And just left the venue. There was a riot. And bunch of fights. A couple stabbings and a bunch of damage to surrounding businesses. We don't have many outdoor shows anymore. And a very strict 11pm close. Damn. Snoop Dogg ain't much dog after all. The Wiggles last show in Brisbane. The original lineup. My three and a half year old was crazy for them. She shat herself in the first minute of the first song. And then after I got her changed she decided the Wiggles were the most terrifying thing she has ever seen. Didn't even last the first half. What a waste of $80 plus $12 for parking. Didn't even get to hear Hot Potato. Removed and deleted. Seemed like pretty shy bands. Yes, the indeed are. More seriously, they are mostly about guns and roses. The Law Goodbye performed at my college in 2008. It's a liberal arts school in the middle of Pinsiltiki. And the band showed up drunk. Kept saying our town was a shoal. And repeatedly tried to cut their hour long set short. They left the stage with a half hour. Left in their set. And the school's concert committee had to physically push the band back onto the stage. They put zero effort into the show. And I lost whatever respect I had for them. After having listened to Shimmy Shimmy quarter turn thousands of times in high school, there was a girl who lived on my hall, and she and her boyfriend were huge Hello Goodbye fans. They were so excited for the show. Her boyfriend came in from out of town, and they left so disappointed. Puddle of Mud a couple years ago, they came on stage an hour late and where Scantlin was clearly effed up on something. He yelled at the audience, to quote suck a bag of Tayuak sang half the lyrics of two songs, and stumbled off stage. Whole thing lasted maybe 10 minutes at most. He was probably effed up on heroin. I saw him a couple of years ago also, and he was nodding on heroin and quit after a half hour, and wanting to fight audience members. That could easily beat the shout of him. This happened 2 months before his 2 hour standoff with 30 police officers. I saw them a couple years ago also lol. He came on stage with a giant backpack and set it down next to the mic. Never took anything out of it. When they were done he just picked up, put it on, and left the stage. I really wanted to know what was in there. Also, I remember him throwing a water bottle into the crowd and there weren't many people there so it just hit the ground awkwardly in one of the large spaces between people. I was working as a stagger hunt for a rock fest about 5 years ago, and the finale act of the entire festival was Rob Zombie. The show sold out, and I was stoked to see a legend perform from side stage. However it was short lived, because after one and a half songs, Zombie's voice gave out, and he had to leave the stage. There was a 3 hour waiting period and the audience was chanting for Zombie to come back out, but it never happened. The house told us to start tearing down the stage, and the crowd started to riot while me and the stage crew went out front and began packing up the equipment. People were throwing stuff at us from the crowd, booing and chanting, but I guess I would have been too if my $200 non-refundable ticket was wasted. Truly a memory I'll never forget. It wasn't a bad performance. Peresi. Just a case of the wrong audience. Way back in 2003 a cash flush Harley Davidson was having a huge 100th birthday party. And people rode into Milwaukee from all over the world to celebrate. HD had lots of stuff going on all weekend. But they had hyped the hell out of their secret concert headliner. And people had been speculating for weeks. It's gonna be the Stones. And it'll be awesome I bet they got Springsteen. Steppenwolf. Yeah brothers. Get your motors running. So the concert starts. The Doobie brothers played their stuff. Tim McGraw was flawless. But the crowd wanted more. And they got it when Kid Rock rocked out. Then the super secret headliner came out. And it was hard rocking legend. Elton John. People stared in disbelief as Elton ended his piano ballad thing. Shortly thereafter they started leaving. And I'd guess more than 30% of them did. Even changing up his set. And playing his classics from the 70s didn't help. He did bring Tim McGraw back to play with him. Which was kinda neat. But it wasn't enough to turn it around. Nothing against Elton. 
because he's awesome, but he was the wrong man for the job. Mad props to him for going on though. When he guys closing the act after two songs seems a theme of this thread. Madonna Murray field Scotland in 2012. She was late coming on which wasn't the best start. She was bloody awful singing live. The tickets were stupidly expensive, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't a sellout. There was loads of standing room left. She didn't do an encore. Oh and the sound was terrible. I saw her in Vienna in 2012, and it was awful. She came up hours late, and was rude to the audience, thinking we wouldn't understand her speaking English. Luckily we won the tickets. So many people I asked had won them. I guess they were just giving them away, trying to fill the location. We left about after an hour, as did many many others. I saw her two years ago in Manila. I'm a big fan. But the tickets were so expensive, so I just bought the $160 ticket. On the day itself, they moved me and my friend to the $600 section, trying to fill in the place too. Madonna Slane 2004. It didn't help that it was lashing rain out of the heavens. I was 8 months pregnant. My best friend had to put a black plastic bag over me because she had promised my mum that she'd mind me. Obviously my head was out the top, but I looked like a human dumpster. Madonna had no chemistry. It felt like there was a music video going on in the background and we're just being soaked. I went to see Wu-Tang Clan. Doors opened at 7 and I was there by 730. Show was supposed to start at 9. At 8 a DJ came on stage with his MacBook and played music to entertain us until the Wu is ready. He played until almost 1 AM and during this time he played 6 different versions of the song Method Man. When the clan finally came out on stage, you know who wasn't there. Fine Method Man. But I did get to watch my buddy literally piss on a guy who had punched a girl in the crowd. So it wasn't all bad. Metallica slash Guns N' Roses tour. Don't remember the year. They co-headlined and would switch who played first at the different shows. Body Count was the opener. Body Count played a good show. Metallica came out and rocked it. Guns N' Roses came out about 2 hours after Metallica finished their set. Drunk, out of tune and generally not into it, we left about 20 minutes into their set. All of the concerts I've been to have been, at worst, decent but the worst of them would be Bon Jovi during the spat with Richie Sambora. Nobody had been informed Richie Sambora wasn't going to be there so, when they came out and started playing, you could just feel the entire energy of the crowd die down. As we listened throughout the songs, you could tell something big was missing. Bon Jovi just did not sound the same. It was disheartening. It's amazing how much Richie brought to Bon Jovi, and yet people only know John. My wife and my mother-in-law are huge Bon Jovi fans, and have seen them play a bunch of times. We're an NJ after all, so it's natural. They've told me the same thing you've just said. The whole vibe and sound of the band changed when he left. James Brown. Sometime in the 90s, he was 2 hours late getting on stage, and then 90% of his songs are built up while he shuffles back and forth. I hear he was great in his prime, I did not see him in his prime. Morrissey at Coachella in 2009. He whined the entire time and dry hacked because one of the stalls served meat. I had hitched a ride with a band that was trying to sneak in and I went ahead and just bought my ticket. They soon gave up and texted me they were leaving. So I paid like over $100 to watch Morrissey gag and maybe 10 minutes of Paul McCartney. Yep, that sounds like Morrissey. Saw cake and between sets they spent 30 minutes trying to give away a lemon tree. They did this by having the crow try and guess what kind of tree it was, and the acceptable answer was Myers Lemon took the crow a long time to get there. It was a real energy killer. I just read through all of the other comments trying to find one about cake. My concert was an apple tree. So annoying. What the hell? What's with the fruit trees? I saw them at a music festival once. There was no tree giveaway, but the lead singer spent 20 minutes trying to split the crowd into two halves to each sing part of a song. He also asked if there were any Hispanics in the crowd, and when some people went woohoo he called them liars. When I was 11 my sister and her boyfriend took me to a Jimmy Buffett concert. I was having a good time when all of a sudden I feel a warm spray on the back of my legs. I didn't think much of it point then it happened again. So I checked to see what it was and saw the guy behind me zipping up his pants. I got a fine pissed on. So I told my sister who was next to me. She didn't believe me and said it's just beer. 
People spill beer here all the time. Fine. My 11 year old mind didn't want to believe it anyway. Then it happened again. I quickly turned. Tap my sister on the shoulder. Lo and behold the guy behind me was swaying back and forth singing along to Margaritaville with his tiny pecker out pissing on me. She yells oh my god and has her boyfriend get security. They take us back to the security offices so I can get cleaned up. And I heard the security yelling at the dude for pissing on a kid. We went back to our seats but can't say I had the best time knowing I got pissed on three times. Buffett puts on a fun show. But dear god the middle aged, drunk, drugged up crowd can be some of the most obnoxious people you'll ever encounter. These are people's parents with real jobs. And they turn into animalistic swingers when he comes around. Buffett is a genius, not musically, but he knows his audience is a bunch of middle aged folks living in the suburbs and panders to them better than anyone. He sells a fantasy, so a guy pisses on a kid three times, and only gets a stern talking to a R. Kelly can relate. I'd be pissed off too if I got pissed on. Mattis Ahu. He just paced around the stage for the first half of the show. Stopped the set at some point, to shout at someone in the crowd for smoking some weed, and then sat down on a speaker, to finish the rest of his show. Like. He literally just sat on the speaker, until he left. I didn't expect to see this here. His was also my worst concert experience. He seemed totally drained, and just kind of danced around for a bit then ended his set early. Felt pretty bad for the guy. Definitely him too. Two summers ago at Virginia Beach, he took all his old reggae music, and obliterated the style to some weird dark rap, like he played his hits. But the style was so different I didn't recognize the songs until halfway through, when I picked up on some of the lyrics. There was even a really dope reggae band that opened for him named Rise. They brought a lot of energy and we were all ready to dance. Then Mattis Ayahu's weird music happened. I thought maybe I just need to wait through the weirdness for his hits. Ended up leaving early once I figured out he wasn't going to play any reggae that night. Seemed like a lot of the crowd was disappointed. I know my group of about 7 was. Spinal Tap. Springfield 1992. They were only on for 20 minutes. This is a rock concert not a bleeding, splish splash show. The one where I thought I was still young enough to go into the mosh pit, and busted out both of my front teeth which ended up costing dollar sign 3k to fix. The band was Clutch. I have had similar experiences at Clutch shows. Never lost any teeth. But I have seriously misjudged my ability to participate in a mosh pit at my advanced age. I realized this a year ago at a flogging molly concert. I could go for the whole show. And now I can't even make it through a song. 5 Iron Frenzy. About 14 to 15 years ago. Nothing against the band. But a third of the crowd consisted of Christian parents in the back half of the venue nervously eyeing the situation constantly. That sounds hilarious. Scat is a gateway music to punk rock. All pastors know this. Amy Winehouse in D-Bay. A few weeks before she died. She was so out of it she barely sang and left it to her backup crew to entertain the crowd. She was booed most of the concert. The one where my brother was playing in the orchestra and in the middle of Mozart's symphony, the conductor had a heart attack and died on stitch. I assumed the first violin stepped over him and kept conducing. Right. Oh man that would have been truly metal. The immortality of Mozart squashed by a mortal. Out of all the hedonistic and self-destructive types I read about here, the most metal show comes from an orchestra conductor. Man, what a crazy life. 1978 Maple Leaf Garden Fury Heap, opening for Jethro Tull. I just realized that this was 40 years ago and nobody here could give the slightest sh, but it was awful. I wrote this out right after I went to the concert point DJ Kailed. Let me preface this with I'm an exceptionally easy to please person and can count on one hand how many acts out of literally hundreds I've seen where I didn't really care for. In the past year, I've had the misfortune of being dragged to his effing sets. Three times pointed hurts to think about it, and they are all fine dumpster fires. He got booed off of the EDC stage. How do you piss off ravers? They are the nicest people, you know how. By pretending you're an iTunes teaser, and play literally 30 seconds of each song. If we are lucky to get that much, constantly interrupting your own performance to hype up the crowd with your now we bout to turn it up bitch then why did you turn the music down? For real what are you doing? If he wasn't screaming in between songs, he literally had no transitions. 
I swear I heard him do that awkward 90s scratch slash rewind sound at least 5 times, and the transitions make no sense, they're awkwardly cut off slash interrupted in middle of verses, oh, best part is DJ Kaled hires a DJ to DJ for DJ Kaled, I'm sorry but you cannot call yourself a DJ, if you're not even going to try to DJ, it makes no sense, and not knowing how, is no excuse. Plenty of producers have become competent DJs through the years by hard work and practice. How are you gonna be the hype man for your own show? That's so effing stupid. And you know what? He still did all of this at Demi's concert. His last song he did was a 5 second clip to a can I song I can't remember right now. And then made the crowd sing the next minute of it. It was so awkward. Then he proceeded to have a refined social media hour for the finale of his set. So he can get a post for his ig. Twitter. Snapchat, Miss Base Top 8 Honest to God I stopped paying attention, and was furiously focused on my Natchez and third beer and even my drunk A couldn't bear it. As far as being a performer goes, he is as talentless as they come. He is absolutely the worst act I have ever seen, and I'm not even exaggerating. I would be embarrassed if I was Demi for having that trash on tour with her. I swear to F I'm God, if my tasteless friends drag me to one more of his shows I will castrate them. Demi was of course flawless, and no the one. I bet he said that a million times. DJ Kaled at times, feels like he's not a human, but a soundboard with buttons he pushes, and random phrases that make no sense have nothing to do with anything come out of his mouth. He's not even a good hype man at that. DJ Kaled is like the Oliver Jewelry of the music industry. You're getting scammed when you pay for his shows or music. At least he does get one thing right when he says, congrats ya played yourself. But this show hot ones that he's in is pretty hilarious. He can't handle spicy food at all mayo. Now we bout to turn it up bitch then why did you turn the music down? For real what are you doing? This killed me. I'm dead. In my hometown there is, maybe was, I haven't been back in a while, a venue called the Caledonia Lounge. It was the kind of venue, where bands play their first show to a small crowd, usually friends and family, not normally my scene, but a friend of a friend was in the second band up, so we all went out, to pay $5 cover and drink PBR with the hipsters for an evening, which brings me to the concert. The opening band was some type of goth one a metal group. Lead singer in a leather jacket and mohawk. Guitarist looks exactly the same. Bassist wearing Steve Jobs black turtleneck. And the drummer in a stained white t-shirt. And about three beers deep. It was halfway through the first song and the singer stopped the band to say that the drummer was slow. The bassist started beeing at the singer, rightly so in my mind, for stopping the show. The guitarist backed up the singer. The drummer threw his beer at the singer who, now dripping PBR went up to the mic, and told the whole room f you, f this band, yeah all suck and walked off the stage, the whole room is silent at this point, and, bless his heart, the drummer does the bay dum tsssss on his drums and they all left the stage, I assume it came to fisticuffs because, while we were out on the porch smoking and waiting for our friend's band to load in, the bassist was simultaneously loading up his kit, and bleeding from his nose, the friend of a friend's band was pretty bad too so, coupled with the dumpster fire first act, that was the worst concert I've ever been to, hands down, tl, doctor got to hear one half a song before the band broke up on stage, showing my age here, the beach boys in Adelaide Australia, back in the 70s, came on stage an hour late and the lot of them sounded absolutely horrible through the whole concert, those harmonies they were famous for were left back in the US, I swear there must have been a lot of help when they created their albums, because live, they were terrible, saw them in like 2005 in a casino parking lot, they went on a rant about how they were tired of boy bands like Justin Timberwolf and Stink, I think they forgot they are a boy band themselves, but whatever, I had fun pretending to surf, lol, boy bands like Justin Timberwolf and Stink. They use those same jokes, when I saw them circa 2005 as well. Smashmouth played a free outdoor concert two blocks from my house last summer. Just as I suspected they sounded absolutely terrible live. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Hoping they come back this summer. They did a free concert in a park by me a couple years ago. They did a 10 minute long rendition of All Star, where the lead singer made the crowd sing only shooting stars break the mold over and over again since no one seemed to know the actual words he was actually getting pissed over it 
then some chick threw up on my buddy. One of the best concerts I've ever been to, and it didn't cost a dime. I'm sorry but he had every right to be pissed. If you don't know the words to All Star you are no shooting star to me. Saw them at a free outdoor concert in my city. They played All Star, and I'm a believer. Twice, lead singer also pulled a young girl on stage, and was grinding on her, then asked her how old she was, and when she said 16, he pushed her off the stage. That was pretty funny. Oh my god why isn't there a video of this? LMAO what? Damn I wish Shrek would play a concert near my house. Rage Against the Machine Lollapalooza 1994 at FDR Park in Philly. They were one of the bands I was waiting to see. But instead of playing their set, they decided this was a stop on the tour, where they were going to make a political statement, and came out on stage naked with duct tape over their mouths and the letters PMRC on their chests, which made it all the more odd, because no one even talked about the PMRC anymore in 94, and just stood there with their dicks dangling in the warm summer breeze for 20 minutes, while a single note of guitar feedback on sustain, hummed the whole time. Then the feedback stopped, and they walked off stage and that was their whole set. I was pissed. Didn't they give a free concert for it afterwards? From Wikipedia. On July 18th, 1993, Rage Against the Machine protested against the PMRC at Lollapalooza 3 by standing naked on stage with duct tape covering their mouths and the letters PMRC on their chests. The band used up their 14 minute performance time without playing any songs. The only sound emitted was audio feedback from Tom Morello and Tim Comerford's Guitars 11. The band later played a free show for disappointed fans 11. 14 minutes for a set at a festival. What a joke. Fee festival. I almost feel guilty for laughing, but I don't. My brother's 5th grade band concert was just terrible. Absolute complete rubbish. I can't believe how amateur those kids were. Bob Dylan. I had to do a lab report. That day and Bob Dylan was still the worst part of my whole day. At this point you go to see Bob Dylan to see Bob Dylan. And not to actually hear live music. Saw DJ Shadow in Sydney a few years ago. His show was scheduled for a club type venue. Appropriate, as he's a DJ, but was moved to a warehouse type venue due to demand. Doors open at 7, and there's a few opening acts listed on the bill, so I stand around and watch those, but the venue was completely wrong for the type of show. There was one small bar and a single DJ on a big stage just looked wrong. DJ Shadow didn't come on until about 1.30 in the morning. Last train left home was at 1.20 am, so I was screwed, and by then all the energy of the room was gone and everyone just seemed to want to go home. Childish Gambino, about 4 to 5 years ago, he sat on an amp the whole time, and barely put the mic to his mouth. The whole set was about 20 minutes, I feel like it was around this time he started publicly going through some mental health stuff, so it makes sense. Saw Blink 182 twice in 2 years. Set list was exactly the same, down to telling the exact same jokes about balls and stuff between the same songs. Side note, in both cases I was there, to see the other band they were playing with, Green Day played a great show, was that circa 2002, I went to a show, where Jimmy Eat World opened, then Green Day played their international greatest hits album, then Blink. Basically, it was loving the Green Day set, and just looking at girls flashing their tits for Blink. Good middle school times lol. Green Day are excellent performers in the purest form of the word. They play good music, know how to entertain a crowd, and they do a lot of crowd interaction. They are just fun to experience. Angels and Airwaves reveal show in London. After a year or so of Tom going on about his world altering music, the hype for this show was ridiculous. It was all secretive, and in this weird church venue, it was so sad feeling the few hundred people there have their excitement dragged out of them, and beaten to death by Tom's new grown up singing voice. 